The FX DRS Pro is an air gun made with the goal of bridging the gap between air guns and rimfires in precision rifle disciplines. Earlier this year at SHOT Show, we got a close-up look at the production version and before that, I was even able to be part of the development process, shooting pre-production prototypes and giving feedback. But this will be my first experience with the production version, which is more efficient, more powerful and more ergonomic. So, to say I'm excited is an understatement. In this two-part series, we're going to run through the entire setup and tuning process with phase one being a general configuration and balancing of the valve and hammer to try and find a good projectile weight and velocity for both the aluminium and carbon cylinders. Followed by phase two in which we will fit the chassis and get to work fine tuning our settings to tighten up group sizes and velocity spreads. Because we'll need to bleed the whole system between different cylinder tests, I know that we'll be consuming plenty of air. So. Our day begins in the garage where we've lined up all the air tanks and put my cold tree compressor to work. Okay, we're out here at the range and we're gonna get this video going by doing something that you probably didn't expect. We've got just the bare barreled action uh, over here and we're gonna be spending the whole day just shooting with this. That may sound weird, um, but today is not about shooting tight groups and getting every little bit of precision out. Today we're going to call phase one and that's just the general configuration of getting the settings you need and trying to understand how to balance the valve and hammer because that's critically important. So this may be a blessing in disguise not having the chassis because we can now focus on the inner guts of the DRS without getting distracted by the fun of just engaging targets downrange. Um, in phase two we'll start to get more uh, detailed as we'll fine tune stuff and kind of get the most out of um, the gun in terms of tighter SDs, tighter groups, all of that stuff. But for now, we want to get a ballpark setting that we like. We want to find uh, an ammo weight that we like that will give us enough shots per fill, but still give us the power we need. Um, and we don't actually need the chassis for that. So without further ado, let's take this bad boy uh, to its little pedestal behind me and let's get going. So our setup for today is as follows. We have a Leofoto tripod, really sturdy. We've got a Leofoto uh, tack table, which is just gonna basically sit on top here. And then what we're gonna do is just plonk a bag on top and sit our barreled action on top of that. Um, just remember the goal here is not to shoot tight groups. So, um, we're not going to be focusing too much on what we see on paper. In fact, to start off, we're not even going to be shooting paper at all. Um, the focus is purely going to be on numbers. And um, by numbers, I mean velocities and how many shots you get before you have to refill. So we're going to be looking at our gauges. Top gauge here is the fill pressure. The bottom gauge is the reg pressure. So we're gonna be keeping an eye on, the, on the, the reg pressure and making sure that it's staying consistent shot to shot. And we're gonna be keeping an eye on the full pressure. We're gonna be starting at the maximum full pressure for each cylinder. And then we're gonna be shooting our way down until we see the reg pressure uh, drop and that will be our full shot string. So PCP stands for pre-charged pneumatic. And basically what that means is that all the air that you need for the shot you're going to take is stored within the gun. It's pre-charged. It's not a, a, a piston brake barrel or underlever air gun that when you pull the trigger, a piston moves forward to compress air before it's released. The air is already in here. So you can get really, really low vibrations as opposed to a spring air rifle. Um, you fill the gun or well, this gun via probe. So you've got a foster connector here. You'll connect a hose to it. You'll slide the, the probe in and you'll fill your gun to the maximum full pressure, bleed out the tank and then pull this out and then your gun is charged. The cylinder on the DRS actually sits up here around the barrel, which is something very, very unique. Um, what that allows us to do is get the gun nice and low profile um, so that you can actually fit through tighter props and barricades. But the issue then is where do you put the plenum? Uh, the plenum is essentially the regulated air chamber. So the way a normal PCP works is that you've got a hammer, which is adjusted back here. 
uh, when you cock the gun, you pull the hammer back. When you pull the trigger, the hammer moves forward and it strikes a valve. The valve then opens and allows air through and that's what, uh, that's what allows your shot to go off. The valve then closes with the help of a valve return spring, but actually mostly with the help of the back pressure of the air. So keep that in mind. And then, uh, and that's the end of your shot cycle. You can then kind of reload and go again. But um, what makes a regulated air gun different is that obviously as you shoot your, uh, shoot your shots, you're depleting the, the air storage in here and in so doing, depleting the pressure. So that's not a good thing because not only is it affecting your velocities, but it's affecting the way that that valve opens and closes. Every time the hammer hits the valve, it's got back pressure to deal with. So the higher your pressure is, the harder it is to open that valve, but the higher the pressure is, the quicker the valve closes. So the valve timing and the pressure curve when you take your shot will dramatically change as your pressure changes. And that's where a regulator comes in. The regulator on this gun is adjusted externally right over here at the back. Um, and the regulator chamber, or plenum as we call it, is right here uh, below the action in the form of like a sort of magazine shape, which I think is really well thought out. Um, and this can actually be switched if you want to use the low power DRS Classic. You just get a smaller low profile plenum and it's like having that magazine on your hunting rifle tucked away. So that's, that's really cool. But for this game, we want a big plenum because we want to dump a lot of air really quickly. We want that valve to open quickly and close quickly from that high back pressure. And that's what a big plenum allows you to do. Um, so yeah, you set your rig pressure and that not only controls how much pressure is at your disposal when you open the valve, but it also controls how quickly the valve closes. And that is the thing I want you to focus on here because your valve timing uh, is the difference between having your groups fly all over the place and having your groups tighten up. Uh, if your valve is open too long and you've got all that air just being dumped behind the slug, you will see your groups open up. You will hear the gun bark, you'll feel it pushing back and you'll see that you're getting so few shots per full. So we want to balance the hammer and valve and that's easier said than done because as you turn the regulator pressure up, if you don't adjust your hammer, you're actually going to see your your velocity drop because just remember that valve is now harder to open and it's easier to close with all that back pressure so as you turn the rig pressure up you also need to turn the hammer pressure up and that's where you get the flip side of it is if your hammer becomes overpowered for the pressure let's say your rig pressure is too low and your hammer is set too high that hammer is going to hold the valve open for too long and you're gonna get that air being dumped out, which is not what we want. Um, keep in mind, comparing to a rimfire, that a rimfire operates at, at a peak pressure that's up to like 10 times as much as a PCP. So a rimfire, you don't have to worry about gas being dumped out the muzzle with an air rifle <coughs> because that working pressure is so low, we actually need to dump quite a large volume of air to achieve the same results as a rimfire and we need a longer runway. So that's, that's an inherent disadvantage of a PCP, but it's something that with the right settings you can work around and still make it accurate and, and efficient. So I've put digital gauges on here just for the purposes of tuning and getting easy to read uh, precise measurements of pressures on both the full side and the, and the regulator side. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start at a lower reg pressure. Um, I'm not even gonna bother going below 150 bar uh, because our goal is a high power competition gun, but we're gonna start at 150. We're gonna start with the hammer spring backed out and then we're gonna slowly work our way up until we're at the velocity that we might want with the ammunition we wanna use. So enough rambling. This will go over here and let's get the process started. When adjusting the regulator, you want to use very small incremental adjustments and take shots in between to get the air moving and let the rig settle. We're at 149 bar to get things started. We've backed the hammer spring all the way back almost to the point where it's flush and we've got the rig at 149 bar, which is like, it's basically the minimum I expect that we're gonna get any decent results out of, but I know for a fact that I'm probably gonna to wanna to, well, I'm probably gonna to need to push the rig pressure higher to achieve the results I want to. 
But I will say before we get going that you need to decide what you want to do with this gun. If it's going to be a trainer rifle that you shoot pellets or lighter weight slugs like let's say 26 grain to 30 grain for training purposes, um, then you can put the reg quite a bit lower and work your way up from there because you're not going to need to push the power as much. But my purpose is to compete with rim fires and in order to do that you can think what you want but the reality is if you are not shooting a projectile with a bc that can match uh, or at least be close to the 40 grand projectiles that rim fires are shooting you will not be in the same class you're just going to struggle come any wind so my goal is the minimum weight i'm, I'm willing to shoot is a 34 grain um, i would like to go up to a, a, like a 40 grain if possible um, but we're going to be trying to, to push those heavier weights and trying to get at least 14 shots per full. Most stages will be sort of 12 shots max, um, but you want a bit of a buffer in case, you know, weather conditions change and the air is it's slightly less efficient or whatever. 14 shots should be good. So we're going to push the gun until we get to a point where we get those 14 shots with projectile we want. And that's going to be the way we're going to go. So to start off, uh, let's fill the gun to the max full pressure for this carbon cylinder, which is uh, 250 bar. And then we'll attach the chronograph and just start shooting. There you go. All topped up. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the FX wireless chronograph. And we're just going to start off with 40 grain slugs because I've got a lot of them. <laughs> and we're gonna just see where we're at from the start. I can tell you it's gonna be very low. Okay, 675 feet per second. That's very low. So what we'll do is we'll start turning the hammer spring adjuster up, let's say half a turn at a time to start. And what we're gonna see is it might increase a bit, but it's gonna to get to a point where it, it plateaus and you can't get any more speed out of that particular pressure. 789. Let's give it another half a turn. 898, so we're around about 900 feet per second. Let's give it another half a turn. 926. Another half a turn. 923. Okay, so 926, round about there, that's our that's our peak. We we're not going to be able to get more than that from this reg pressure. The reason is the hammer's hitting the valve, the valve's dumping all it possibly can, and that the acceleration that you can get from this reg pressure is, is already at its limit. There's no ways we can get more out of it. So what we need to do now to actually improve that is slowly start turning the regulator pressure up. The reason we're starting low and working our way up is that if you start your way high and work your way down, you have to turn the regulator against the pressure and that can actually damage it. So you wanna start low and turn anti-clockwise on the reg screw in order to avoid damage. So let's do that. We're gonna go stick this in here and we're just gonna watch the reg gauge. So we're at 150 now. 156 okay i'm gonna stop there 155 156 and we're gonna keep going okay 939 so already a bit higher gonna go another t half a turn in 919 interesting so you've actually gone down now so, reg up once again. I'm gonna go straight to 165 bar to save us time. Let's go slightly up on the hammer spring. 946. Another quarter turn. 946, okay, so we've maxed it out at 165. On we go to 170. 963, 
956. Okay, so we've maxed it out. 950, 960, round about there uh, at 170. So I'm going to top up again and then we'll go to 175. Basically, we're just getting a feel here for for how, uh, how the gun responds to different rig pressures and what our maxes are. You can even plot a graph if you want so that you can access these settings a bit later. But yeah, this is basically just to get a feel for the gun. Okay, it's saying 180, but just remember that might settle after one or two shots. Let's see where we are velocity-wise at 180. 974. Let's take another one because our pressure's dropped slightly. 974. So you'll see our, our velocity consistency is not great, but that can be fine-tuned. We, we're going to play around with the hammer spring, maybe back it off a bit, like an eighth of a turn at a time a bit later, and we'll, we'll get that tightened up. Nine. 980, let's give it another half a turn back. You'll find as you balance the valve better, your consistency velocity consistency will improve it's simple mechanics hammer striking a valve it needs to strike at the same time the same way every time the pressure needs to be the same every time if you get those things right this ammo is extremely consistent there's there's a, a variance of less than less than half a grain i'd say less than a quarter of a grain across a whole batch so you don't need to worry about that we have settled on a rig pressure of like 177, somewhere around there. We've got a hammer spring set relatively well. At the end, when we're very happy, you're gonna wanna lock tight this, this screw at the back because that can potentially back out by itself. I wish they had some sort of locking mechanism to keep it in place, uh, but they don't. So lock tight it's gonna have to be, but right now we're still experimenting. So we're not gonna lock tight it. We're just gonna Possibly even just mark it with a little scratch or a little pen and just and just make sure it stays in the same place And then obviously we can watch our rig pressure too, but the next step here We're gonna fill it back up to 250 and we're gonna check whether we can get those 14 shots per fill If not, we're gonna have to back it off or use a lighter slug, but uh, let's see what we can do Okay, we're at 249 bar So we're gonna shoot down and see what we can do All right Screen recording here, we're gonna go new string. And we are going to shoot until we're off the reg and we're gonna see how many shots we get. Not gonna to worry too much about the SDs and extreme spreads and all that stuff. I just wanna see how many shots we're getting. Okay, I'm going to stop there, we've taken 17 shots, we've got one more left in the magazine, 17 is plenty, and that's already looking very good. So let's take a look at the numbers here, shot string, 17 shots, average of 976, high of 986, low of 970, Extreme spread of 16 feet per second and a standard deviation of 4.2 feet per second. Hey, that's pretty good. I honestly don't even think we need to do much fine tuning, but once we get the chassis on in our phase two, we will see exactly what the results are on paper. My experience though is that these 40 grand slugs are so forgiving. Um, they're not as fussy as the lighter weights when it comes to finding the right velocity. They just tend to, to work. I don't know if it's a balance issue, or whether it's the fact that there's more of a bearing surface on the shank of the slug, so it's got more surface area to engage and less fussy with barrel inconsistencies. But yeah, that's that's some really good uh, some some really good numbers over there. Much better than I expected, actually. At this point, I unfortunately have to be the bearer of some bad news, uh, and that is that not all 40 grand slugs will fit in this magazine. 
Um, the magazine depth is probably the only thing on this gun that I'm, I'm a bit bummed about. I feel like maybe uh, we went backwards from the Pantera because the Pantera could easily handle 40 grain lengths. This one is a bit, bit shorter. It's the same depth as the Crown magazine. So I had to actually custom make 40 grain javelins with a shallower hollow point so that the overall length was a bit less. There are some 40 grain slugs on the market, like let's say the Gen 1 javelins, which have a flat base, which fit better. But the solution for you might just be using a different brand or using a lighter weight, like a 36, 38 or 34 grain. All of those will work pretty well. But yeah, it's actually more about the BC than it is about the weight. So if you've got a decent BC slug that you're happy with, go for it. As long as it fits, as long as it cycles reliably, you're good to go. We've settled on some basic rig settings, so time to shoot some paper. This is our high-tech target board. Piece of cardboard with some dots on it, <laughs> but it'll work. Got a target there at 50 meters. There is no wind right now, or very little wind, so I'm not concerned about that having any effect. Um, but we're just gonna go ahead and play around, shoot on paper. Keep in mind, we're shooting off a bag with no chassis, uh, and the bag is in contact with the cylinder slash barrel. So don't take these results too seriously, but we're just gonna, we're just doing this to have fun basically, and to see what it can do with these slugs at the speed. I'm gonna start bottom left. <laughs> oh, pull that one, this trigger is so light. I need to try and pull my trigger a bit slower. Pull that one again. And really need to set this trigger, it's very light. This is not bad considering what we were shooting off. Pretty good. So we've learned quite a bit about this uh, carbon cylinder, but now we're going to bleed out the air, we're going to uh, remove the carbon cylinder and we're going to fit the aluminium one, just see what, what happens. Bleeding the system, you can only take the cylinder off once the system is bled. So once the pressure is at zero, then we can start removing this guy. Once the air is all bled out, you should be able to just unscrew the cylinder. And it's always interesting to look inside here because the way that the cylinder actually or rather the way that the barrel fits inside here, is that it's actually free to expand and contract forward and backwards, which is important because the expansion coefficients of carbon and aluminium and steel are a bit different. But there you go, there's the barrel. And you'll notice that this barrel is very, very, very solid. You could play a game, game of golf with this thing. But anyway, that's the barrel. And over here, we have an aluminium cylinder, so carbon, aluminium, carbon's a bit lighter, it's got a slightly bigger volume and it can handle a slightly higher fill pressure. Aluminium, which is the one that comes standard, can only be filled to 230 bar. So the aim of the next test is to see how many shots per fill we can get from this cylinder at the exact same settings. And then we might, if we don't get enough shots per fill, which is very possible, we might actually have to tone it down and potentially use a different weight slug, like a 34 gram. But let's attach it on and see. This just threads right in here. And now we can pretty much connect the air hose, fill it back up, see what we can do. Unfortunately, the aluminium cylinder only gave us 11 shots at the same power setting, so we're going to need to back it off a bit. 
And since we more or less know what we're going to get with the 40s, I'm going to skip straight to the 34s, which in my opinion are a very good match for this cylinder with the limited 230 bar fill. Okay, 34 grain slugs. I've just backed off the hammer spring quite a lot, get them down to a thousand feet per second. Uh, there's quite a velocity difference at that same setting between the 34s and the 40s. The 34s at that same speed were like 1,020, which is good, but to get more shots per fill with this cylinder, we need to back it off a bit. So, taking it down to 1,000, and we're just gonna shoot a string and just see what happens. So, let's do it. Okay, that's 18 shots and we just dropped off the reg, so plenty of shots. The verdict is, if you're going to be shooting with the aluminium cylinder, you are not going to get those heavier 40 grain slugs up to like 980 plus feet per second. It's just not going to happen. You're going to run out of air. Uh, carbon cylinder, no problem, but with this one, you're going to either want to shoot uh, 40 grain slugs at 960 or lower, or you're going to want to shoot 34 grand slugs at like 1010 or lower or anything in between i guess but um i think for now we're gonna stick with us maybe shoot a group uh and then we may switch back to the carbon but i'll decide that at a later stage all right 34 grand slugs slightly different setting 50 meters i do not know where my point of impact will be so we have to just figure that one out as we go. Well, that pretty much sums up uh, our phase one testing of the, of the DRS. This is sort of 90% of the work, um, or it'll get you 90% of the way there. The rest is, is fine tuning. And honestly, even with, the, with these settings, I guarantee you, you could come to a, 100 yard or 100 meter NRL 22 shoot and do really really well it's only going to be at sort of 200 to 300 that you start to see that the slightly higher variances in velocity have an effect so that's what we want to tighten down and obviously you want to eke out everything we can uh, as far as group size goes but happy with the way that today's gone let's go home let's put the chassis on let's set up the trigger let's get the rifle balanced let's get the cheek piece and butt pad all set up all the good stuff and then we'll come back in part two of this very detailed video we'll be fitting the chassis along with a few other goodies getting all the adjustable components set up to my body and then heading back to the range for phase two of our testing which will see us fine tuning for better group sizes and tighter velocity spreads You'll also be looking at how you can use a Doppler radar chronograph to find your BC and to find the drag model that best matches your actual drag curve. It's going to be interesting, so make sure to subscribe and I'll see you then.